Hi students, this is a lecture on section 15.2. Uh, here we're going to be talking about double integrals using vertical and horizontal cross sections. Um, this is a little bit trickier than just rectangles, but once you get it set up, it's not actually as bad as you think. Um, so uh, what they're going to ask us to do in our homework uh, is they want us to write an iterated integral double integral over a region R, dA, um, using both vertical cross-sections and horizontal cross-sections. So we're going to talk about both of those um, as, we, as we work through a problem. So for this first problem, um, well, they take a while, so I may only do one or two of these. But for this first problem, we're going to go ahead and um, evaluate this integral right here. Um, so we need to set it up. And uh, vertical cross sections versus horizontal cross sections are just two different ways of setting up the same integral. So let's start with the vertical cross sections because that's the more standard one. So with, with your vertical cross sections, uh, your inner variable, your inner integral is dy okay so your inner integral is with respect to y whereas with horizontal cross sections your inner integral is dx okay so with horizontal cross sections, your inner integral is with respect to x. So we're going to start with um, part A, which is vertical cross sections. So we want to make an iterated integral where dy is the inner integral. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, so for part A, we want to have a double integral. Okay, and we want our inner variable to be dy and our outer variable to be dx. And they just give us this picture here. As you can see in this picture, the region r that we want to use for our integral starts at y equals x squared, and then it ends at y equals 5x. But notice they don't have um, these points labeled on the x and the y axis, so we're going to have to find those. Um, but since our inner integrals with respect to y, this is going to be um, vertical cross sections. Okay, so this is going to be vertical. Vertical cross sections. Um, so how do we do that? Well, um, you, you just start from the inside and work your way out. So on the inside, we know that y has to start at x squared and it has to end at 5x. Because y is already solved for x there, um, that's actually how we're going to set it up. So the inner integral is going to go from y equals x squared up to y equals 5x. And I know it's strange having um, two variables inside of your limits of integration, but that's actually how you set these up. Okay, now why is it called vertical cross sections? Well, let me show you in the picture here what's going on. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm not the best artist, so bear with me here. So as you guys can see here, uh, we've got two functions. And y is starting at the bottom function which is x squared, and it's ending at the top function, which is y equals 5x. So what they mean by vertical cross sections is you pick a point here on your x-axis, okay, and um, it's called a vertical cross section because what you're really doing is you're letting, you're letting y run from here to here. Okay, so y runs from y equals x squared to y equals 5x, 
and how you set up that inner integral is a vertical cross section because as you can see here you've got a vertical line here going from here to here so that's a vertical cross section setting that up um, so for vertical cross sections you always want to have these functions solve for y now the little bit tricky part is x so how do we know what x goes from when they don't label it so because they didn't label it we're, ha we're going to have to figure out where x starts and where x ends. So how do we do that? Well, at these two points where it, where it starts and where it ends, these are the points of intersection. Okay, so points of intersection. And the way you, f the way you find the points of intersection is you take the, these two functions and you set them equal to each other. Because when they're equal to each other, that means that graphs are intersecting. Okay? So, uh, find points of intersection. By equating the functions. And equating just means you set them equal to each other. Okay, so here we're going to be equating x squared and 5x. Okay, so we're going to have um, x squared equals 5x. And notice I'm using the form where it's in terms of x. That way we can solve for x. So all I did was I took the x squared and I set it equal to 5x. And now I can solve this for x. So if I subtract 5x from both sides, I get x squared minus 5x equals 0. Okay, and then um, on the left side I can factor out an x. So, I'm, so I've got x times a quantity x minus 5 equals 0. And then... Um, Using the zero product rule, setting each of these equal to zero, I get x equals zero, or x equals positive five. Because to solve x minus five equals zero, you add five to both sides. Okay, so x equals zero, x equals positive five. So now we can just label those on our graph, and we know where they are. So this is zero, and then this, this one here is positive five. Okay, um, and since we know that, now we can just go ahead and put those in for our outer integral here. So for our outer integral, let me zoom in a little bit. For our outer integral for the vertical cross sections, we're going from x equals 0 to x equals 5. And this is actually going to be our answer. So the only nice thing about these is in your homework, they don't actually make you do the integral. Since we already know how to do iterated integrals, they just make you set it up. Because setting it up is the hard part. Actually doing the integral is pretty easy. It's just the same as iterated integrals from the previous section. Okay, so there's vertical cross sections. Now vertical cross sections are a little bit easier than horizontal cross sections. So for part B, we're going to be doing horizontal cross sections. Which means we're going to have a double integral once again. But our inner integral is going to be dx and our outer integral is going to be dy. Okay, and this is trickier because like I said up here, since your inner integral is dx, um, your horizontal cross sections are going to have to be solved for x instead of solved for y. So for the vertical cross sections, um, where your inner integral is dy, for those, uh, you had to have them solved for y. You had to have your functions solved for y. Well, for horizontal cross sections, you want to have your function solve for x. Okay. 
So I know that sounds a little bit strange and it's a little bit weird to set it up. Um, but basically, instead of having y equals 5x and y equals x squared, we have to solve each of these for x. Okay, so for example, I'll take um, y equals x squared and I solve it for x by taking the square root of both sides. So I get x equals plus minus square root of y. And uh, as you can see in this picture here, we're only doing um, the positive square root of y because the negative square root of y would be over here on the left side and we're not doing that. We're just doing the positive square root of y. So I'm going to go ahead and circle the positive one. And then uh, we also need to solve y equals 5x. We need to solve that one for x as well. So we start with y equals 5x, but we need to solve it for x, so we divide both sides by 5. And so we get x equals 1 -fifth y, or uh, y over 5. And I know it's a little strange, but these are actually the same functions. Um, so here the y equals x squared is the same as x equals square root of y. Since we're only positive here for our integral, we don't have to worry about the negative square root of y over here. And then for this, um, for this uh, diagonal line, that's the same as x equals y over 5. So we've got x equals root y and x equals y over 5. Okay, now the picture can get a little bit tricky, I know. But once you have them solved like this and you have them labeled, then to do uh, horizontal cross sections, just keep in mind that your whole integral needs to be set up in terms of x. And it is set up in terms of x here. Um, but x is going to go from, well, y over 5 is actually closer to the x axis. Uh, y over 5 is actually closer to the y axis. So um, when we're doing our horizontal cross sections, we're actually going to be starting here and ending there. Okay, so we're starting on x equals y over 5, and we're ending on x equals root y. Sorry, that looks a little messy. Clean that up a little bit. Okay, so um, our horizontal cross-section starts at x equals y over 5 and ends at x equals root y. And that was actually the tricky part. So we know we start at y over 5 and we end at root y for our inner integral. Okay, so we start at x equals y over 5 and we end at x equals root y. That's for our inner integral. And that, that inner integral is the tricky part, so that's the dx. Okay, and then for the outer integral, we just need to figure out what y is going for. So what is y going from? Well, here we can see y starts at 0, but then what is y when we're up here? So once again, we want to find our points of intersection, but we actually want to find what y is at those points of intersection. Okay, well, um, to figure out what y is at those points of intersection, we can once again just set the functions equal to each other. Okay, so points of intersection. For y, we can literally just set those functions equal to each other. So we can say square root of y equals y over 5. Okay, so that's just taking those two functions, setting them equal to each other. 
and then I can multiply both sides by 5. So I get 5 root y equals y. And then I can actually square both sides of this equation. Okay, so if I square both sides of this equation, I get 25y equals y squared. Okay, and then I can subtract 25y from both sides. So I get y squared minus 25y equals 0. Okay, and then we can factor out a y on the left side. So if we factor out a y, we're left with y times y minus 25 equals 0. Okay, and then using the zero product rule, we get two values for y. So we get y equals 0 and y equals 25. Okay, so y equals 0 and y equals 25. All right, so that's just using the zero product rule. All right, so that means that's how we're going to set up our iterated integral. Um, and so uh, we start at y equals 0. Let me write that in. We start at y equals 0, and we end at y equals 25. And that's the whole iterated integral. All right, so I did two examples there. I did the vertical cross sections and the horizontal cross sections. And um, your homework problems, fortunately, are just going to be setting them up like this for the most part. So hopefully that won't be too bad. And in the other problems, um, they'll be iterated integrals. So we've already done those.